We're back at it again with this huh? Does it feel like that and inside out you guys are happy with how we deal with this movies? If it's yes then. I'll see you by the pool. Or do you want to prepare first before you watch this like some popcorn maybe? We both know it's too late as you won't do that now or you can't rather as this is too good to be true. Wanna take a dip? Um, actually I think we're just gonna hang out here. Yeah, I wouldn't mind swimming. Oh, Okay, title of the movie. Maybe later, I'll tell you that once you get halfway so we can talk walk through this together and enjoy the breeze of the movie. This is another Diderio's movie excellence where her beauty and hotness goes overload as we don't know how high she can go and together let's unwrap their beauty or their clothes off. I don't know guys, let's just watch this more. The layover, could be a droll comedy approximately two ladies who have the hots for the same fellow. Then again wistful and raunchy, it needs to be another, bridesmaids, but settles for being one of those not entirely terrible motion pictures merely take off on the TV since you're as well tired to urge up and discover the farther so merely can alter the channel. Alexandra D'Addario plays Kate, a nicey nice schoolteacher whose work is in risk, probably because she's not exceptionally great at it. Kate Upton plays Meg, her best companion, aka the more out of control one, the primary time we meet her. She's attempting to offer imported North Korean beauty care products, and as the film goes on, she reliably acts as the troublemaker, in spite of the fact that Kate catches up before long sufficient. The ladies choose to elude their inconveniences by taking an occasion getaway to the tropics, but when their plane is redirected to St. Louis, Missouri taking after a tropical storm at Monitory, they ended up enamored with a man who sat between them on the flight. His title is Ryan, Matt Barr. He's got long fair hair and a perfectly trimmed facial hair, executioner abs and a superhero chest, and his voice sounds a small bit like George Clooney's. Essentially the moment Ryan enters Kate and Meg's circle, his exceptionally nearness drives them into a winding of brain dead, now and then horrendous one-upsmanship. Anyone plugging the plug already? I hope you guys are still there watching and enjoying the beauty of this movie. We can do more of this just tell us in the comment what movie would you like us to do more of this, also hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Now let's go back to the movie theater. Their non-stop competition for a beefcake prize continues until a third act plot Ben sends the story in a distinctive course. Of course by the conclusion the companions must realize that their bond is more vital than any man. Meanwhile, we get treated to a cluster of droll set pieces, counting an offhand plunging competition at a in pool that highlights the movie's as it were truly breathtaking visual punchline, and a scene including the filthiest can in Missouri that closes up being merely disgusting. Molly Shannon, victimized Cordry, and Cal Penn are squandered in little parts. Penn's is borderline insulting, after tying down three Harold and Kumar movies, He's stuck playing a in supervisor who's restricted to a few of scenes. The script doesn't indeed have the affability to provide him something curiously to do. I might have played his part, and I'm a loathsome performing artist. The lead performing artists are amusement for anything and knockout gorgeous, in ways that extend credulity sometimes. The plunging scene puts Diderio in a showering suit that could have been on the cover of Sports Outline. Affirming that she's one of those teachers who eats nothing but angle and rice and spends two hours a day at the gym. Bar is I sweet as well, in spite of the fact that his portion is guaranteed at to begin with and thought up close the conclusion of the story. There are two numerous moments once you might capture yourself envisioning the same fabric with pro-comedian entertainers within the parts, Kristen Wiig and Anna Ferris, for occasion. Upton in specific appears a case of settling for the performing artist you'll be able to get rather than casting the in-screen character you need. She isn't violently inaccurate sufficient to supply the radiant start this character requires. Meg and Kate's relationship may be a sensible one-slash-dangerous one pairing. The perilous one ought to seem really unsafe, a animal of unadulterated narcissism and starvation, in spite of the fact that with a center of sweetness that clarifies why Kate puts up with her. Upton's Meg just comes over as repetitively self-absorbed and oblivious, the kind of lady you'd quickly analyze as a pill in the event that you met her at a party, at that point dodge for the rest of the night. Is popcorn what you bought for your food while watching this? 
If I guessed it right then hit that like button and subscribe and comment we hit that, if no, kindly give me a harsh comment down below so we can continue talking together as we continue unracking this unservice. Matt Jones, NCIS, found, who plays a lodging visitor who gets pulled into Meg, Kate and Ryan's drama, is the as it were performing artist who appears to have a life separated from the frail circumstances he's required to sanction. He's the heart and soul of the film, that and a buck fifty will get you a container of coffee. In reasonableness, David Hornsby and Spear crawl screenplay in William H. Macy's heading, yes, really, that William H. Macy, do not do the on-screen characters any favors. But for possibly a half dozen shots, Macy treats the camera as a recording gadget. Indeed in spite of the fact that the composing and acting are once in a while outstanding sufficient to be worth protecting. The lead characters do not have sufficient mental meat to persuade us that they'd hurl a deep-rooted companionship within the waste since a great-looking fellow came into the picture. There are charming disposable lines here and there, not this time, Kate says to Meg in a hotel hallway, recommending that her companion has stolen folks from her within the past, but these aren't created in a way that might increase the droll and make the obligatory reconciliation with lessons learned minute feel unrealistically moving, because it ought to be in a film of this sort. The third act makes hash of the competition besides, which is bothering. Perhaps the heart of the problem is that Kate and Meg's behavior doesn't track with the viable substances of long-lasting, working fellowship between, most, ladies as experienced by, well, any working grown-up who lives within the world. This story would be more persuading with the sexual orientations flipped, two male geeks incautiously harm a deep-rooted bond after a lovely lady sits between them on a plane and, for one sparkling minute, makes them feel alluring, as well. We hope you guys enjoyed the cinematic gems. We also hope you did your due diligence liking and giving comment to support the video. Thank a lot and see you in the next erotica movie perfecta.